Daniel here for Tabletop for One and my top 10 list of board games to take on a vacation. Now this list comes to mind as I'm thinking of going on a trip here pretty soon to go visit some family, bring my kids along, but I also want to have some opportunity to do some solo board gaming while I'm there. And so with all the games I have, it's, it's kind of hard to choose, you know, which ones to bring and which ones to leave at home. Now, of course, space is an issue. You know, you can't just pack everything you want to bring because uh, like half this wall I'd want to bring with me, you know. But I do have quite a many small box games and so I'm going to be bringing a lot of them along. And so on this list, there's going to be 10 of those games. Now, each of these games kind of fits their own category. There isn't a hierarchy here for the games, but the number one is number one for a reason. And I'll talk about that in a minute. Now, let's go to the list. And now with number 10, we have dice. <laughs> dice and a pen. Now, why am I saying bring dice and a pen? Here's the thing. I don't know about you, but I've racked up a number of print and play games. You know, even, even today, the Cursed Menagerie on Kickstarter just finished, and I believe the files are ready to print right now. And so what I'm thinking is like, I know that where I'm going, there's going to be a printer or a print shop. And so if I want to at any point in time, I can just go over to the print shop or use the, the local printer and print out one of my print and play games and play it. Now, most of the print and play games require a pen and some dice. And so it makes it very versatile to just bring these and then decide in that moment whether you'd like to print out a print and play game. So I do believe Curse Menagerie is going to be on my list. I also have one, I think it's called Dice Cards, uh, Vitrium. There's a, there's a couple others that I want to play. And so I, I definitely want to bring some dice and pen and uh, be able to use these should I decide to print those on the go. And the nice thing about that is like, you don't have to worry about the pages bending or whatever in the luggage. You don't have to keep them safe or anything. You just print them there while you're there. And if you want, you can just toss them in the trash and print them at home again when you get home. And so for number nine, I have what, what I would call like the shelf of opportunity. See, I'm gonna be on vacation. I'm gonna have a little more time to myself. You know, obviously I'm not gonna be working on the channel and spending time editing videos. So I have some time to play some games that haven't received enough love for me over the, the years. And one of those games is Pulp Invasion. Now Pulp Invasion is by Todd Sanders. He also does the art and it's fantastic nostalgic art. And Pulp Invasion is this really fantastic sci-fi, you know, nostalgic themed game with dice and very thematic. I, I've only played it once or twice, so I can't tell you a whole lot about it, but I did like the plays that I had. And I do have some extra expansions, although I'm just going to bring the base game. But I figure, why not? I'm going to have the opportunity to, to play the game. And with its size, the, the game will fit perfectly in my luggage. Now, speaking of opportunities, I have a game where I've bought a lot of expansions for it, and I haven't opened them all. <laughs> I know, I should, right? But this game is one of my favorite all-time roll and write games, and that is Rolling Realms. Now, right now, I, I have a variety of expansions here that I haven't opened up. Now, the nice thing about this is that I don't have to take the entire box. See, what I can do is I can actually open up one of these player packs just very carefully at the top, pull out the cards, and then decide a random, you know, six or 12 different Realms cards, put them back in this, and tape it up, as well as uh, player cards. And I already have the dice, I just need to bring a dry erase pen as well, or you pick one up while I'm there. And so this will take a lot less room, and I'll have the opportunity to try out some of these new realms, and I think there's a campaign set in here somewhere as well. And so maybe I should try that out and bring those along. So that is definitely on my list of things to bring at number eight. And I have one more on my shelf of opportunity, and now this is a flip and write game, and I've talked about it a little bit, but it's Next Station London, and I haven't played it yet. I, I really should, <laughs> but now I'm going to get that chance. I'm going to take it along. Again, it's a, such a small box. It's like Pulp Invasion here, very small. It's not going to take up too much space in my luggage, so I'll bring that along and give it a shot. On top of that, it's multiplayer, so maybe there's a chance that some of you know my friends and family might want to play the game with me, and so I have that opportunity as well. And so that's it of my shelf of opportunity items. You know, these are the ones that I haven't played in a while or haven't played new content for, and that sort of thing. Now, speaking of games that you might want to play multiplayer, but also play really well solo, and that's going to be Floriferous. Now, Floriferous is by Pencil First Games, and I do have a friendly relationship with a publisher, but this is my own copy that I purchased before I even uh, did content for them. 
And this is probably my favorite of their games as well. Floriferous is this fantastic drafting game and set collection game of building these flowers and bouquets and stuff like that. It's a whole lot of fun. The art is fantastic. Solo mode is easy to run. Feels like a multiplayer game. Everything is great about this game. It's also small. Look, it's like these. Very small. Easy to put in the luggage. And so that one is definitely going in. And like I said, it plays up to four players. So I do believe there will be some opportunity for that as well. All right, with these boxes here though, I'm kind of running out of room, right? I got to think of some small box stuff. <laughs> so I definitely have some small box games. I've had quite a few. And my first on that list, which is number five on this list, is Colossus. Now Colossus is this kind of puzzle survival game where you're trying to, uh, it's like Shadow of the Colossus, the card game, where you're trying to ascend this Colossus and hit it at its weak points and grow more powerful, and you're managing your stats and stuff like that. I've done a tutorial solo playthrough for it. It was one of my first tutorial solo playthroughs, and uh, I haven't brought it out since, <laughs> to be honest. I just, ha I haven't. I've been busy and haven't, and uh, I've had this put away. But you know what? I'm going to bring it out again. It's definitely worth it. It's one of my favorite small box games. There's a lot of fun there. It's very quick to play and it's very challenging as well. And what vacation would be without one of Mark Tuck's nine car art solitaire games? And so I have Grove here. This is the only one I've owned. Now I did do a preview for Forge, which I think is still on Kickstarter right now. But uh, this one is the only one I own and it's, it's still a great game. I love it. It's very challenging, a lot of fun to play. And so, yeah, that's definitely going in my luggage. No thought about that whatsoever. But also another sm small box game that recently delivered was Welcome to Reckoning. Welcome to Reckoning is uh, by Mike Hyman and published by the same guys who run Button Shy. They publish it under Wonderspell, but this game is fantastic. This will be my only Button Shy game in my luggage, although maybe I'll throw one more in there. Uh, probably Rage More. I'm just putting that out there. But anyways, uh, this one here is fantastic. It's this kind of survival Weird West theme where you have like tentacles and demons and all sorts of things that are coming at you to attack you, setting your town on fire. You're trying to get all these supplies together and get the hell out of Dodge. So <laughs> this this is, this is a great game. Now, understand that I was given a preview copy and did a preview video for it, but this is the one that I personally backed. I paid for this myself, and so that's why I'm suggesting it here. And so, yeah, that, that's a great game. I, I can't wait to play it again, especially with the new characters. I haven't even tried those yet, so I'm really looking forward to it. And of course, we can't forget about Jason Glover's 10 series, right? The Mint 10 games or 10 Mint games, whatever it's called. Mint 10, I think it is. But Dust Runner, my favorite of the bunch. It really is. I, I love Dust Runner. I think uh, Tin Helm might be the next one after that and then Gates. But Tin Helm is great. It's fun to play, easy to table, doesn't take up much room. And I might even be able to play it on the airplane. You know, I think it might fit just well enough on the airplane to be able to do that. So, yeah, looking forward to Dust Runner. Of course, uh, it's going to set off all sorts of metal detectors. Make sure you put this <laughs> through the scanner. But, uh, yeah, I am definitely looking forward to Dust Runner. Uh, adding that to my luggage, definitely worth it. All right, so we're down to the final one here. And now before I tell you what that final one is, it really could be any one of your favorite card games. See, there's a lot of games that I have where you can just bring part of it and you'll have the game experience. Some of those games come to mind like Marvel Champions. Now you may think that you may need a lot of cards, but yeah, maybe a couple decks, but really you could take one villain set, one side scheme set and a deck and bring that together. And then if you have your extra dice that you're bringing along as well, you can use those to count as, you know, the scheming or damage or whatever. So you don't have to necessarily bring everything. On top of that, you could always use a pen and paper to keep track of those things as well. After all, I have my pen. <laughs> and another game that comes to mind is Imperium Classics or Imperium Legends, because all you really need to do is bring two of those decks and then of course the, the regular cards. You don't necessarily need to bring all the tokens. Again, you can use dice to keep track of it or something else like that. But of course the tokens don't take up much room, but instead of bringing the entire big box, you could just bring the two factions you wanna play and you can play them back and forth, switching between the AI and you. So there's a lot of games like that where I think you have that opportunity just to bring a deck of cards. 
But the one game that does that for me is real easy to do, and that's Puzzle Dungeon. Because Puzzle Dungeon, all you need is a few heroes, or even just one hero, if you don't mind playing the same hero over and over again, and the suited cards and the dungeon cards, and that's it. It'll fit in a normal tuck box, it'll be easy to carry, so that's what I'm gonna do with Puzzle Dungeons. I'm just gonna take, you know, like five heroes and the rest of the cards that I need to play, and it's not gonna take up much room at all. I can even use one of these crayon boxes, that's what the Colossus is in. Easy to carry, easy to stow, and uh, I'll have all the cards I need to play. And Puzzle Dungeon is a fantastic game. If you haven't seen my tutorial solo playthrough, please check it out because I, I can't recommend this game enough. Now, last I checked, it's not available. It might be uh, between print runs. I don't have Brian Garber's contact information, and so I, I'm not able to check in on that, but he does have it available for print and play if you want to download the print and play and, and print that out yourself. But Puzzle Dungeon is one of the best games that is in my collection. It's my number five favorite game of all time. It, it is just a fantastic game. And of course, it goes with me on every vacation. I've taken it on every vacation. Like I said, I only take a small portion of it. I don't need this entire box of cards. I just only need a small portion of it to go on vacation with. And it's so portable and easy to do. And so there you go, that was my top 10 list of games to take on vacation. You know, I might be taking more than that, I might grab more button shy games because they're easy to take, but we'll see. I, I don't want to have to keep track of too many games. But yeah, there's a lot of games that you can take, a lot of fun games, a lot of games you can share with other people as well. You know, having those opportunities is great, especially if you're meeting with family and stuff like that. It's nice to have that as an option. And so let me know in the comments below what you think of this list and let me know of your top games that you'd like to take on vacation. Please also like and subscribe to this channel if you like the content you see here. And I thank you very much for joining me on Tabletop for One. Have a great night.